Brick Maniacs. It is time for another episode of Brick Mania TV. Welcome back, Brick Maniacs. Today we have Fitz joining us, as I guess usual now, right? Yeah, I guess this is this is kind of becoming a thing. Cool, so. cool. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we have some pretty awesome models before us here. Uh, which one would you like to talk about first? Uh, well, why don't we talk about this Redstone rocket sure. here first? Um, the Redstone rocket. Um, you know, was uh, basically the result of the early American space program. It uh, uh, provided us the vehicle to put um, several, or I should say, the first capsule, first American capsule right. into orbit, um, piloted by Alan Shepard. That didn't go to orbit. Oh, suborbit. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Helped put our first <laughs> capsule into a suborbital sub flight. Suborbital flight. Thanks, camera um, guy, for being on yeah, top of things. I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, and um, yeah, so the capsule, um, which we'll talk about in a second, um, was put on top of this rocket here. And just to give you an idea of how actually small this rocket is right. compared to future rockets, um, we have the other Mercury rocket here, um, and we have the Apollo rocket here. So this is. Um, kind of give you an idea of the progression of technology. I mean, right. the, to go from this to this is you know, literally a time frame of nine years. I mean, it, or even less than that, because right. they, they launched a few. So I mean, you're talking just a few years, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, anyways, so the, uh, obviously the Russians put Yuri Gagarin into orbit. We wanted to do the same thing, um, but as um, as been mentioned, we didn't actually put anyone into orbit. That's more of a suborbital flight. It was around 15 minutes. Um, the idea of the mission was to gauge, um, to kind of uh, familiarize uh, a human being with the, a complete space flight. Mm -hmm. So the effect on the body, um, how it, you know if he can maintain consciousness, that type of thing. Right. Um, yeah. The uh, the rocket actually. Uh, flew for a altitude of 116 miles and flew at um, roughly 5,000 miles an hour. That's pretty fast. So, yes, it is. That's cool. So, all right. Uh, I guess this particular one we have, uh, which astronaut would this be? Oh, this is Alan this Shepard. Be Alan Shepard. Alan Shepard, uh, much like uh, many of the other uh, early astronauts, was a World War II veteran. He cool. fought in the, um, he was part of the Navy. And then after the war, he became a test pilot, as many of them also were as well. Right. Um, such as, I think, uh, uh, John Glenn was also a test pilot. Right. So, um, yeah. And um, one of the, the uh, uh, something I was, uh, something I looked up was um, the, this rocket and the whole program is actually featured in a book and a movie called The Right Stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the movie... Um, kind of gives a, a really good detailed um, idea of what the the process took. There's a, a several scenes in which they're testing these rockets, and you get an idea of how volatile they were. They blew up so many of these rockets oh, yeah. before they finally got it right. So, and thankfully they did get it right. Thankfully, yes. <laughs> cool. Um, so why don't we move on to the capsule part of sure. it and the helicopter? So again, this isn't this isn't to oh. scale with minifigures, right? This would maybe this minifigure would be the trophy scale, would be a little bit closer. That's probably even a little bit tall. Yeah. Um, so this capsule on top of this would be this in minifigure scale. This one. So now we're going over this next kit, right? Yes. Let's go over the history on the Sikorsky, um, right? The Sikorsky and the Freedom 7 capsule. So the capsule on top of the Redstone rocket was the Freedom 7 right. capsule. Um, unlike the Soviets, where um, Gagarin was more of a passenger on, in, their, in, the, on, in their space program, the um, NASA really wanted to um, have the astronauts manually fly right. the capsule, so they were more of a pilot. So um, Alan Shepard did take over uh, with his, um, excuse, excuse me, <laughs> Alan Shepard 
took over manual control of the capsule for a very short period of sure. time. And so, um, and that was kind of a, a, a landmark that had not been done before. So the capsule and Shepard went through their suborbital flight. Right. Um, it was successful. They were able to re-enter uh, re the atmosphere and the capsule landed in the ocean and then was picked up by this helicopter here, the Sikorsky 30, right. H-34, um, which was first designed in 1954. And um, not only uh, was they said that, um, the, the joke was, was that the capsule what they said was good enough to use again. They also said that Shepard was good enough to use again. Oh. So that was the joke that <laughs> NASA made. Um, but the helicopter, um, aside from picking up the capsule out of the ocean, actually played a very prominent role in the Vietnam War. Uh, they used it uh, before, before we had the Hueys and a number of other um, uh, medevac helicopters, gunships. This kind of performed that role. This was a very right. early medevac gunship. It kind of did it all. Um, and on, in its military designation is the CH-34 Choctaw. That's its military. So the Sikorsky H-34 is its civilian designation. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that's what I got. There we go. So. Cool. <laughs> that's All right, that's a little brief history of these models. Um, and now it is time for the, the kit designer himself, uh, our very own Yitzi, to talk about his models. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for right now. Stay tuned for right now. Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Yitzi. You are now here to talk about uh, the build process behind you, your Andrew. models. Yeah, welcome. Cool. Um, yeah, let's talk about, actually you wanted to show off this as well. Yeah, um, so since we're doing space race right. stuff, I didn't want you guys to forget that um, we have the Mercury Control Center. Right. Just, this is Mercury Redstone. Yep. Um, you have that control center. So we still have a couple of these available. Um, and then also the uh, Mercury Atlas um, kit, right. which give that a little crank to, to take Whoop. off. How there cool is that, man? Nice, ma'am. So this one has the Friendship 7 capsule, and there's a printed tile on there. Mm -hmm. And then the next kit that we have now has the Freedom 7 yeah, capsule. Yeah, slightly, slightly different capsule. Slightly actually, different, so. yeah. But did but do uh, the different printing for that. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, we can take this out of the way. Nice. And then get on to the kits themselves. <laughs> right. It's itself. Themselves. The kits it's selfs. Selfs. The kits okay. Up there. Selfs. Okay. So the first kit that we're going to be going over will be the Mercury Redstone 3, um, which was what launched the Freedom 7 capsule, right? So let's talk about this one first. Sure. The Mercury Redstone 3. Mercury Redstone 3. This is um, probably my most complicated kit ever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, it's a bunch of round two by two bricks stacked up. It's straightforward. It's it's uh, a. Yeah. The funny thing is, it's somewhat straightforward, but um, it is uh, one to one uh, one tenth yeah. scale to match the. I mean, that's Legos in scale. Saturn. Yep. With this, you know. And also the uh, Mercury Atlas Six uh, rocket that we did. Um, and the Vostok also we right. did also at the same scale. So when doing this, it's like, oh yeah, sure, stack a bunch of two by twos, but it's like, wait a second, is it too wide? Is it, you know, two studs wide, three studs wide, mm -hmm. two and a half? Like, you know, we try to do things as accurate as possible. Sure. So um, yeah, let's check so, it out. Yeah, these look really awesome, actually stacked side by side. That's a cool, like, that would be a cool display piece or something. Like yeah, that, so. yeah. I, I, we, we think so. Yeah. <laughs> so this um, comes with a custom printed minifigure as well. Um, it's the same space suit as you saw on the previous, uh, the Mercury Atlas kit um, with, um, John Glenn? with John Glenn. Right, right, thank yep. you. Um, different face printing uh, this time. Yep. When we say custom print, we mean custom. We're not just throwing another head on there. And you actually do a lot of research on like the faces. Yep. And even though there may be some slight differences and stuff, it's not like we're taking a generic Lego head or something right. and throwing it in there. I'm trying, you do plenty I'm trying of research. as best I can to yeah. capture that person's face. So. And trying. you do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. There's a sticker pack that comes with this. Sticker um, pack plus the custom printing. Plus custom printed figure, custom printed tiles down here. So straightforward. A yeah. good piece of the, uh, to your collection if you're into this. Yeah, space. you got a nice on top. You oh, got yeah. this two by two cone uh, printed. You know, we're like, hey, we got the sticker pack. Why don't we throw a sticker on time? Like, nope, it's right. it's got to be printed. It's yes. you know, you can't beat that. In our in our Mercury uh, 
the uh, control center, mm -hmm. we have a little one by one cone that right. has a Friendship 7 on there. You can't get smaller <laughs> or cuter than that, right. but this would be the next size. Um, so you have stickers here on front and back. You got, you know, there and all the way up. And then you got the printing, the figures 360. So that's about it. Cool. So this yeah. capsule, like I said before, represents this minifigure scale capsule. Yes. So let's move on to that kit. Absolutely. Mr. So, Korsky. So this is one set, this, this uh, Mercury Redstone 3 with the figure, mm -hmm. right? So this astronaut now can go into this capsule. Right. This is actually 135th scale. Right. So this kit comes with uh, this helicopter. This <laughs> comes with he helicopter included, right? <laughs> yeah, so this, this would be the um, uh, helicopter, Sikorsky right. H-34, that um, plucked the astronaut plus capsule out of the right. water and brought it back to the aircraft carrier. Um, Again, you know, we did the research, so it's to scale, and right. of course, you know, it's brick mania, so we have to throw in all kinds of fun functions and stuff. Cool. Um, but this kit does not come with the astronaut, so if you want the astronaut to go inside the capsule, uh, and of course it does, fits right inside there, then you got to get the other kit too. What about tile pack? Tile pack? Yeah, there's a tile pack as well that we're releasing. We'll maybe have details on that later. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember all the details. It's just there's a tile pack we're also releasing that has all the that, different missions on it. That's similar to uh, to this one here. Yes. So you can transform this kit into any mission that you want from this series. So that's cool. Yeah. And that's a tile pack. Okay. Let's. Um, we've seen. We've seen this. This is a uh, cool printing on the front of that. Um, the the printing again is not not only is the capsule slightly different, built slightly differently, but the the printing on here is also made yes. to match either the. The other one was the Friendship 7, this is the Freedom 7, and you should definitely be able to, to tell. One of the differences, obviously it says Freedom 7, sure. um, but also has the round window instead of the uh, rectangle window. <laughs> but that's, that's one of those uh, defining differences. Cool. Also the United States on the side, um, the Friendship 7 has the United States flag on it, and this right. one does not. Right. Okay, helicopter? Yeah, helicopter, let's do it. Okay. Um, awesome sticker pack for this. Yes, thank you. Really cool. Um, I kind of knew what we were going to do with it, but because it's Lego and we got some parts and stuff in the way and all that, you know, we kind of worked together and scaled it right sure. and all that. Yep. Um, now the numbers on here, like this 44, you know, we have it here, we have it on the side, the ET, all of these actually represent the actual helicopter that got Alan Shepard with the Freedom right. 7 capsule out of the water. Right. There are, uh, there were other missions where there's a similar helicopter that, you know, took a different astronaut with a different capsule out of the water sure. and they would have different numbers like 32 or something. Um, but, uh, you know, the helicopter also again was used in uh, Vietnam, uh, Coast Guard used it. Um, Marine One is actually the president also was uh, transporting this. The top part would be white. Uh, and believe it or not, I discovered it's actually still used today. Wow. <laughs> so some place service history. instead of a crane lifting things up like yeah. an air conditioning onto a roof, they can call in one of these guys, they come in, lift it up, drop it, and then there they're gone. Go. You don't cool. have to assemble the crane. Cool. Anyway, let's show some features of yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. So it comes with the uh, one pilot and one crew chief. Um, you could get two pilots up inside here, and the crew chief basically would be hanging out uh, with out this door with mm -hmm. the uh, the winch. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's just show the, uh, the bottom here. So when, when they were, let's say this was sitting on the aircraft carrier and they're gonna go launch or to go get the um, uh, capsule. capsule and astronaut. So they would set up this string, rope, assembly, whatever. So and this then, is bobbing in the water. Yeah, right. it's bobbing in the water. So we have your couple things here to, uh, one by one clips to grab it. Here, why don't you do that? Here, okay. Put that one more on there. Nice. There we go. Yeah, so the first thing is they'd put this hoist down to grab the uh, astronaut. They would right. pull pull him up. And yep. then they would take this and we <laughs> There we go. Bring that back to the uh, aircraft carrier and drop it off. Cool. Yay. All right, so we can take that off now. All right. All right, so... 
This is the helicopter. Oh, so one thing that is super cool about this, um, those helicopter blades, those, those spin, right, obviously. They do spin, but besides for spinning the traditional way right. with your finger, right. <laughs> we have a really cool way. I like to, uh, if you've seen some of my builds before, you know that I like to add some functionality in there. And in this case, this was the, uh, where the engine would be. Yeah, it's super cool. It actually, the real model does open up just like that. Just, you know, yeah. splits right in half. The door is open the up there, right there and the engine uh, is like a piston engine. It's like, I think the last one that had a style like this. Mm -hmm. But I put this tool in there to give it a wind. You can crank it up. And nice. It's so fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. You can close up the doors. And it'll keep spinning control. forever. That's not true, but it's just cool that yeah. it, there's a bit of a, um, a joint axle thing that goes through. U-joints. A couple, couple of U-joints in there, and they, they fit in. They go right behind the, uh, the pilots, which is how the real thing would go. So uh, that's cool, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's fun when you, can, uh, when you can make it accurate and... Nice. Yeah, make it all work. Those, you know, that engine, everything, it just tucks in there just perfectly. So I was, I'm real slick. happy with how that uh, turned out. Yes. All right, so another feature we have here are the, um, these pneumatic, um, or somewhat pneumatic uh, shock absorber things. So when the helicopter lifts off and lands, yep, comes down. So that's a cool feature I thought we could uh, put in there. Um, let's see, you got your sliding yes. sliding door here, that works. You have this uh, step that can go a little up and down if mm -hmm. you'd like it to. Uh, of course you have the working uh, winch and the, uh, the helicopter of course also folds up for yeah. storage. Yeah, because this, this would be used on the deck of an aircraft carrier, yes. correct? Cool. Yes. Do you want to show off that? I would love to show it off. Okay, cool. so first you have the tail, which is pretty simple. Um, it's held on by two you got studs there, right? Hinge, two hinges there, and then two studs that, that lock it in place. Right. It locks pretty well. It folds really nice. Um, that is how it would fold up. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the blades. So how you do this. You just pop it off. Just like in little, real life. Sure. Exactly. Little no. trick to it, and I'll show you guys quick. Um, to, to keep it locked straight out, they're pushed all the way up to the top, mm -hmm. but to bend it back, you just slide it down just a tad. Aha. And then these, the back two will fold in. Nice. Okay. And then the other two, all you have to do is just turn, turn those clips. Uh, the, the right side and the left side will just go opposite each other. So you turn one to the right and one to the left and snap them back on and then they should sit um, just fold back nicely now the interesting thing is that they would um, actually tilt down a little bit yeah and because i tried to give the uh the main part here as little as friction as possible so it would keep rotating right um the the whole assembly actually tilts backwards oh cool yeah so naturally that's, I mean, that's tilts what it looks backwards because like. uh, of weight and that's what it, that's yeah what it looks like. they would actually um, I think fold a little bit to that sure. outside, and they had a special uh, in red, um, some kind of like hanger system to hold them all yeah. in place so they wouldn't be flopping right. all over the place. But uh, yeah, um, one other thing too is these um, windows on the side up by the cockpit, they are intended to do exactly like the real thing, and that is to slide backwards. Nice. Um, and they do on both sides. I, I put the, um, the winch, uh, here on the side, I put that out just far enough so the, that that chill right or that side one can go back, and the landing gear does pivot in the back. This thing That's does it. everything. You see, nice. Oh, yeah, you could you could <laughs> fill up the crew inside. Absolutely cool. Anyway, all right, that is the uh, Sikorsky. What's the full designation of this? Overall, it's sure. the H34. Cool. The UH34. The Sikorsky UH34, and we have the Mercury Redstone three. Both designed by Yitzi. So, thank you very much for joining me. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. And for more information, check out brickmania.com. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell if you're cool. If you don't click it, then you're not cool. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. Thanks for watching.
No, you're cool. It's okay. You're cool either way.